The views expressed in this video are that of a hobbyist, not of a business owner or a commercial operation. Clear as mud? Hey people, it's me again. I am posting a quick follow-up to my last set of videos regarding the rack for the 16G towers because I'm being pressured right now. So, excuse the mess in here, all of the water and such. Oops. I had to water next to the greenhouse, so that's why I have a flood on this end. And then I also have my misting system running right now because it is freaking hot outside today. Good grief. Anywho, I'm being pressured to come up with something because people think I've dropped the ball. Apparently, they didn't see the last video that I posted explaining that on Cinco de Mayo, I went 50% blind. And since I have a patch on my left eye right now and no shirt on, I don't think anybody needs to see that. So I'm standing on this side of the camera. But, yes, I did get my coordination back and I have started work on this again. And I should have my towers actually installed in this first rack um, this weekend because we're going to have rain and cloudy days for the rest of the week, all through the weekend. So this is good. So, as you can see, what I told people before about having the struts going across the base there in order to support rain gutters, those are in. Ignore the spacing of the rain gutters right now because um, I'm going to do a demonstration here. They are only there to catch the water that comes out of the upper manifold. Now when I say upper manifold, hopefully I don't get my iPad all wet here. Um, the upper manifold is this. It's a PVC pipe that has a bunch of quarter inch barb fittings screwed into the bottom. Now if you remember my very first two videos that I ever posted on YouTube where I had the mess of uh well eight v towers in an indoor setup and i created an overhead reservoir that was made out of a four inch schedule 40 pipe and i th drilled holes and threaded them so i could or tap them i guess so i could just thread the fittings right into it and that's what i've done again that's why these fittings right here are actually threaded through the PVC coupler and the PVC pipe at the same time. This makes plumbing a whole lot easier. Can I get down here and see? Maybe. But it makes plumbing a whole lot easier uh, if you don't have to buy a whole bunch of separate fittings and cobble things together. You just drill a hole and thread it so you can just twist the fitting in there. Um, these little manifolds, distributors, whatever you want to call them, they are connected by just plain old pond tubing going down, as you can see, to a one and a quarter inch Schedule 40 line down there. There's a separate valve for each row of towers. Um, I put the valves down there on the bottom because I don't want the actual pressure inside of this. Now I'm sure it'll handle it just fine. I just don't want the pressure inside of it. I would rather have all of my pressure down there at the bottom. Uh, the gutters. Now if these are spaced out correctly, I don't know, you might be able to see it. I put marks up here, like there's one. That's where one tower is going to be. Another one there, another one there, and another one there. Um, these fittings are inset towards the center. Sorry, these fittings are inset towards the center to stay out of the way of the hanger that's going to be here that the tower is going to hang on. 
because I don't know I think there's about an eighth of an inch gap between the PVC and this uh, steel conduit up here but those are quarter inch they will feed the towers by way of let's see this tubing here this is quarter inch inside diameter what three eighths inch outside diameter and it pushes on to these barbed fittings over here and that's what feeds the tower since the hole in the top of the tower is three eighths inch I'm gonna turn on the water here hang on look at something else for a minute a second or two yikes all right That is the reason that those gutters are spaced the way they are right now. That's going to catch the water coming out the bottom of the towers. But as you can see, that provides a very even flow to each tower. Plenty of water flow to each tower. Now each of these gutters fills up. And they will overflow into this one. That's wet on this end. Well, it's already starting to flow. And as you can see, that drains into the gutter that I mentioned previously that's going to run the full length of the greenhouse. And it returns back into my sump. Now this design is so easy to build, it would be easier if a person does not lose the vision in one of their eyes midstream through the planning and building process but you can duplicate these so easily and just tap into it as you build on the water feed line taps in the drain line taps in everything just taps in and you could just keep going and going yep there we go it's starting yeah as you can see The water's coming out into the main gutter return line and going back into my sump tank. All right, before this video gets really stretched out, a lot of people ask me, what pumps do I recommend? Well, good grief. There are thousands of pumps out there online. Luckily, I had one fail last night, so I had to get up at 5 a.m. this morning and replace it. But these Jabal brand DC pumps, I think are the best. Uh, this one is 15,000 liters per hour, which comes out to 4,000 gallons per hour. And it says a 7 meter head height, which is 23 feet. I'm never going to use that, but the main reason I got this is because it provides plenty of pressure. I'm never going to be lifting my water any more than 5 feet but the main thing that i want is pressure so that's why i use a larger diameter pipe down there at the bottom a one and a quarter inch id uh, pvc line or 32 millimeter i think that's what it is and that can keep going but i keep the pressure in the bottom all i want up going up is volume i don't need pressure up there I just need volume but these pumps are like $135 US well worth the money um, they come with a controller so you can actually instead of having to have valves to open things up or close them down you can just use the controller over there and if you're feeding fish you see that button on the left that looks like a pause button you press that and it shuts off the pump for 10 minutes you can feed your fish and they'll be able to eat all of the food without the pump, you know, feeding water into it and sucking all of your fish food down into your sump tank. But this video is up to nine minutes and almost 30 seconds now, so I'm gonna cut this off before it gets too crazy, but like I said, I was being pressured to come up with something to prove to people I have not dropped the ball. No, I haven't dropped the ball. Um, I got slowed down. I am 
going to have all of, or at least the 16 towers installed out here this weekend. I'm expanding the height of my towers for this rack up to four feet. So when you do the math, I'm gonna have two racks like this and then one rack that has towers based on three by four segments and another rack of towers based on four by four segments. And when you add it all up between the towers and this little NFT rail system that I'm just going to use for growing small herbs, it's going to be an even 900 plants. So 864 plants in the towers, 36 plants in the NFT rails. But here we are, 10 minutes and 30 seconds. I'm going to cut this off now. So that's all I have until this weekend. Oh, one more thing. The gutters down there. They're going to be filled with lava rock. Why? Biological filtration. Don't need anything more. I have plenty right now. My tilapia have not died, but that's another reason that all of those struts are going across there. They have to support weight of lava rock in each one of those. And that's even that one and the one running the full length of the greenhouse. Cheap and easy biological filter and it's easy to clean. Especially if you have a cement mixer that you can tumble it in. So that's it. I'm cutting this off now. Catch you around next time. Hopefully I'll have another video posted this weekend. Bye.